And uh, now uh, we'll move uh, to the third finalist, which is uh, still among the artificial intelligence category. Uh, so the third finalist is Flash Talking uh, from the USA. Please welcome Steve Ladam, Global Head of Analytics Flash Talking. Over to you, Steve. Thank you. Um, really excited to be speaking to some of the, the brightest minds in marketing analytics. So thank you for, for having us. And I hope this is insightful today. Uh, today, I'm going to speak to you about a new way of thinking about creative measurement, which is leveraging AI to translate creative into data that can be analyzed uh, and really think, help you think about measuring creative and understanding creative and acting on it in a different way. So let's first start with some of the gaps in creative measurement. Um, numerous studies speak to how campaign performance is directly impacted by the creative. Nielsen's had some great studies on it. Yeah, when it comes to measuring creative, we're still way behind the, the curve. Uh, if you think about the advances made in measuring performance of media and audiences, uh, today creative analysis is limited by several factors. Here are three key ones. One is the reliance on file names or creative IDs rather than the elements of the copy within those ads. So you might understand which ads are performing well uh, based on some type of data-driven analysis if you're doing that, but it's really the elements within that that lead to a lot of subjectivity. There's a data scarcity problem. Oftentimes, if you have a lot of combinations of, of concepts and versions, you just aren't gonna get enough exposure, uh, enough exposed converters or visitors and non-converters uh, for each of those combinations to get a, an accurate read. So that's always, always a challenge, which oftentimes you may to model at a higher level and you can't really get those granular insights. And the last thing is just, just a, you know, I gotta shine a light on it where it's due, bad metrics uh, when it comes to creative. Surprisingly, a lot of brands are still using click-through rates in the last touch. As a result, brands have very little insight to what's actually driving outcomes. Even if they know which creative ID is working, there's a lot of subjectivity about what are the objects, what are the colors, what are the backgrounds, what are the headlines, calls to action, what are the different elements that actually drove those outcomes. And that lack of knowledge translates into a lot of wasted spend because you're spending a lot of money uh, against bad creative and a lot of lost opportunities, not only in that campaign, but also in future campaigns, because there's really no closed loop to take those insights into your future creative strategies. The solution I'd like to walk you through today is using AI to describe and analyze the creative. So we can now use creative um, AI, use AI tools to translate uh, creative ads into metadata that can then be analyzed using data-driven models. And we break it into two groups. One is scene recognition, which is looking at the objects, the backgrounds, think of like, uh, are you having people or do you have cars or what are the colors? What are the different shades of the colors? What's the size of the logo, the positioning, et cetera. What are all the imagery? Uh, what are the imagery in the ads? And then also looking at the text recognition, which what language, what's the headline, the, the, the offers, calls to action what font size, what colors, what size, how much space in the ad are those taken up. And this is where you can now translate those ads into creative metadata and create a, effectively a log file that can be analyzed just like any other log file in your data-driven routines. And we can analyze that the, the, the elements against the performance of those creatives against business objectives to start understanding using conversion path analysis and multi-touch attribution, which creative elements are actually driving performance. To bring some of this to life, I'll walk you through a couple of beta uh, clients of ours from uh, earlier this year, O2 and Betway, both in London, starting with the O2 Insights. Uh, one of the, the first requests was which phone ads are actually performing best um, and which ones are not. What we found here is when we index performance of the creative elements, again, this is just looking at the phone models in the ads. Uh, we index them, if you see, you have a, a, on the left, the iPhone X is R is 1.7 index. And whereas the, the, the Galaxy S9 was at 0.6, the indices here are looking at the weighted, uh, basically the, the relative performance of each element against the others in that group or in that, in that particular field. So 1.0 would be the weighted average. So anything above one is good, below one is not so good. Uh, but here you can see that for these particular audiences, the iPhones were outperforming the Galaxies. We also looked at the different headlines, they had some pretty clever seasonal creatives with some cool treatments. We found some that performed quite well and some that were not performing quite well. We get into logo size um, and these are two ads didn't have a ton of dif distinguishing or dif differentiation like in the backgrounds of the copy uh, or the colors as you see, it's all kind of blue and white. So, but we did see uh, as additional um, dimension that the larger the logo was as a relative to the ad space, 
the better the ad performed. Not the same delta we saw in some of the others, but still meaningful nonetheless. Again, all of these insights taken together can provide some really powerful conclusions when thinking about future creative strategies. Looking at Betway in the sports betting world, here we started looking at headlines. We saw that uh, the, the really powerful, impactful free bets, money back actually was much more, uh, resonated much more with customers, new signups than more the aspirational or lifestyle type headlines like Hedra Hunch. Again, you can see the outperformance there, 3.5 to 0.7, pretty dramatic. We also saw that background colors matter and that those that had a little bit of um, some splash of something bright in the background, in this case, you see the ones with the orange indexed at 2.6, whereas the white on the other end was uh, 0.8. The green is a little bit better, but again, more insights about um, colors and how they actually resonate with users and drive performance. And looking at objects, uh, we saw that ads with people in them, whether they're customers or athletes, perform better versus the ads that just had straight, straight up copy, no, no people in them. So to explain how it all works, and I'll kind of sum up, uh, one is there's really three steps here. First is you have to scan uh, and take screenshots of every ad, every combination, each video, anywhere from one to 24 frames per second. And you have to do this so that you get a full view of each ad with animating copy, which is the toughest part of it, frankly, is getting the headlines correct, uh, especially for app copy that's floating in from the side or from the bottom. Uh, it, it, it's challenging. So you have to generate tons and tons of tens of thousands of images, dedupe them, and then you run them through the AI uh, processing. And this is using um, various uh, models to look at uh, distinguishing the copy as well as the imagery and translate that creative into a metadata log file. Now, look, now that we have a log file that we can analyze, we can incorporate that just like any other media data and start analyzing that using uh, different conversion path analyses, propensity models, and MTA to develop some insights that can then be used to uh, drive performance in your campaigns for doing it mid-read or at the end of the campaign for key insights looking ahead. So to sum up, we feel like it's a new and exciting way to measure creative. It's using AI in a really um, no-brainer kind of way to, uh, no pun intended, to uh, translate creatives into data that can be measured and then using that data to drive the same analysis we've been doing with media and audiences for quite a while to get better insights into each element. And then you can apply those within and across your campaigns and inform your future strategies and do this efficiently uh, with high degrees of, of accuracy and specificity. And with that, I will pause and go to Q&A. Thank you, Steve. Right on time. Mm -hmm.